Welcome. NOAA has just issued its climate summary for April 2014. April set an all-time record for global temperature anomaly, with an average temperature of 0.8 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. Looking at the land and ocean separately, land was 1.3 degrees centigrade above the average, and the ocean was 0.6 degrees centigrade above the average. Both of them were ranked third. The Northern Hemisphere by itself set a record. The Southern Hemisphere was the ninth warmest April on record. We have quite a record streak going. It's been 38 years since we had an April with a t mean temperature that has been below the 20th century average. This also marks the 350th consecutive month with a mean temperature above the 20th century average. Well, let's see how the warming is distributed across the globe. Here I've marked on a map the areas that have established records during the last month. The ones marked in yellow are record highs. The one marked in blue is record low. There are 13 areas that have established record highs and only one area that has established record low. If you take the actual areas of the squares that are involved in this, the area ratio is 90 to 1. This shows just how global this warming is. It seems that Alaska, Europe, Northeast Asia and North Africa and Queensland sizzled, while there were no areas of the globe that experienced extended cold periods. Meanwhile, the continental United States experienced about average temperatures, the exceptions being the west coast of California and the southeast coast of Florida. Nearly a third of the continental United States has experienced moderate to extreme drought. This is primarily in the southwest, stretching from Texas to Oregon. On a global scale, precipitation was near normal. However, there was one outstanding uh, precipitation event in Pensacola, Florida, where they got 20 inches of rain in two days. Meanwhile, NOAA has come out with its 2014 hurricane forecast. For the Atlantic Basin, it is predicting a below normal activity level, with 8 to 13 named storms, 3 to 6 hurricanes, and only 1 to 2 major hurricanes. For the Pacific Basin, they predict a normal to above normal season. The big news is that we seem to have a large El Nino brewing. The current readings are very similar to those in 1997 and 1998, which produced the largest El Nino on record, and led to some of the highest global temperatures to date. Although El Nino primarily occurs in the Eastern Pacific, it has effects worldwide, generally leading to many areas being warmer and drier than they normally are. But this effect depends on season. This shows the distribution of effects during the December to February time frame. Here is the equivalent map for June to August. You can see that the patterns are very different. For the continental US, during the winter months, it generally means a stormier weather in the southwest and the southeast, with often milder weather in the northern tier states and Canada. El Nino has both positive and negative results. On the positive side, it should mean the relief of the California drought this coming winter, and there should be fewer Atlantic hurricanes. On the negative side, the high temperatures off the Peruvian coast often lead to major fish die-offs. The Amazon could suffer a greater drought, in colder winters in Europe, and ice storms in North America and Canada is more prevalent than snowstorms. The most significant effect of El Nino is a raise in global temperatures. The last big El Nino, which was in 1997-1998, increased global temperatures by about 3 degrees centigrade and led to record high temperatures. If the upcoming El Nino event is anything like the size of the 1997 event, then we will set new high global temperature records. So is it going to get warmer or is it going to get cooler? The anti-anthropogenic global warming groups claim we're getting cooler, that we're going to enter a new Maunder minimum and a new little ice age will be upon us in the next few decades. The anthropogenic global warming groups, which includes just about every climatologist, say we're, we're getting warmer as greenhouse gases continue to accumulate. So what's my forecast? I think for this year or early next year we're going to set new globally high temperatures as the El Nino develops and the trend in global warming will continue. So what's your forecast for the coming year? Record high temperatures? Higher than average temperatures? Average temperatures? Below average temperatures? Or record cold temperatures? Stay tuned for future developments. See you next time.